Tonight, the NBC10 investigators tracked down a doctor whose research may come closer than anyone else to answering the question, is there life after death? NBC10's Luann Khan is here now with the story. Luann, we've all been talking about this this mm -hmm. week. Right, and this pediatrician used to think, this is what he told me, he used to think that people who are interested in near-death experiences just wanted to be on TV talk shows. And then something happened. Something happened to one of his patients he couldn't ignore. And now he believes the evidence points to something after life. All of a sudden, I was in the, the most clear space, most clear, conscious being. Some believe the end is also a beginning. Bear with me. Some claim they know. I did not feel dead. Because they've, they've been there. I did meet God. Ask most scientists. <laughs> they explain it's the brain. Without oxygen. Are these hallucinations, fragmented dreams of a dying brain? Here in Seattle, Washington, there is one man of science who believes he's found evidence that it's a glimpse of something beyond our existence. I interviewed a six-year-old boy who goes, uh, we resuscitated him, and he opens his eyes and he very dramatically says, that was weird, you guys just sucked me back into my body. Dr. Melvin Morse is a well-respected pediatrician, a skeptic, he says, until he was confronted with a story he couldn't explain away. She was what, what you would call clinically dead. She was underwater for 19 minutes. After the seven-year-old girl was resuscitated, she started drawing pictures. What she described to me was not a hallucination. It was a blow-by-blow, -blow, accurate description of her own resuscitation but from a bird's eye point of view. Dr. Moore says the child believes she had to go back to her body to help her mother with her unborn brother. She drew him with a big red heart. Several months later, her brother was born with heart disease. How can dying comatose patients perceive anything? And that's what um, uh, fascinated me. I, you know, I knew that something important about human consciousness was, was to be learned. Dr. Morse has recorded interviews with dozens of children like this who've experienced near death. I was floating the air As one of the few experts in this field of study, Dr. Morse okay, finds bye. children's experiences are the most pure. He says he doesn't believe in God himself, and he has little interest in the experiences many adults often have reflecting their own religious beliefs and cultures. But critics say it's because Christians tend to see Jesus and Indians see Hindu gods, the near-death experience doesn't seem scientifically credible. He's gone to the, if not the dark side, then at least the sort of non-scientific, too easy to cross over to the supernatural side. What do you say to people who say, this is hogwash, th th this is not science? They've never read the literature, and they never have any explanation other than, it can't be that. It was all about peace. It was so peaceful. Social worker Kimberly Clark Sharp says she couldn't come to terms with her own out-of-body near-death experience until one of, one of her own patients had one. The BBC reenacted it in this documentary. Clark's patient went into cardiac arrest. After she was resuscitated, the patient insisted that she had risen out of her body and floated up around the hospital where she saw a blue tennis shoe on a third floor ledge. She got everything right as she described it to me, and I didn't believe her. But to calm down her agitated patient, and she went to look. I did finally, on the third floor, north end of the building, look down, and there was a blue tennis shoe on a ledge. Dr. Morse says it's clear even when people are flatlining in the last moments of life, something profound is happening, something today's monitors can't pick up. The fact is that when we die, we die conscious and awake. Whatever happened to dying in your sleep? What, what do you... Patients do you, who die in their sleep... Are conscious and are awake? Are conscious and awake in the last few minutes of life. The dying process is a learning experience, which, as an aside, is a powerful piece of circumstantial evidence that something happens after we die. His findings have been published in medical journals, and, and he's working to see if something physically changes in the right temporal lobe of the brain when someone has a near-death experience. Those who have had it seem to be in what he calls post-traumatic bliss. I'm just fortunate that I'm not afraid of death, so I'm out there living my life.
one child said to me, um, it was a light that told her who she was and where she was to go. I want to interact with that light that tells us who we are and where we are to go while we're still alive. And that, that to me, is the challenge of the near-death experience. Dr. Morse believes you can get in touch with that part of the brain through prayer, meditation, even the rhythmic movement of knitting. He says there's no absolute proof, but he believes people who have that near-death experience are stepping into another realm. Mm, fascinating. So, he, so he's claiming you're using the right side of your brain or a small portion of it? How much? It's about 20% of the brain. He says most of it's not used, but they believe that's where the near-death experience happens. Most of us don't know how to get in touch with it. You really have to shut off the other part of your brain, get mm. it very quiet. That's why prayer and meditation work. Yeah, that's All fascinating. Right. Fascinating. Never heard of any of this before. It's interesting. Yeah. People have questions about Thanks, Lori. Right. Okay. Well, speaking of questions, we want to know what you think. Is there life after death? Well, so far in our live vote, 81% of you say yes, there is. 19% of our viewers say no. Log on to our website at NBC10.com to cast your vote. Hey, good evening, everybody. A great day.